Hello, hello, Tammy Cinematics Games. Um, <laughs> this is going to be a really random episode, you guys. Uh, I told you guys I wasn't going to do an episode for a bit because I don't have anything to talk about. Hey, can you pant that way? Come say hi. Come say hi. Hello. This is Theodore, if you're new here. Uh, he's the mascot. And the spoiled brat in the house. Um, anyway... <laughs> I'm Tammy, Cinematics Gains. I knit, I dye, I spin, um, I sew a little bit. Comfy? Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm easily distracted. Th see, this is why you're not allowed in here. You're pushing the camera and then you're gonna get up and you're gonna knock it over. Stay. Okay. You good now? Um, what, what was I saying? Easily distracted, I forget things, I go off on tangents. Hello, welcome. My office is a mess. Um, <laughs> but anyway, like I was saying, I wasn't gonna film another episode so soon because I don't have anything to talk about because my knitting mojo has left me um, <laughs> and I've been doing absolutely no knitting. Um, well, I mean, I worked on a sock and I've done a couple rows on my blanket, but I haven't touched any of my sweaters or my shawls or just nothing. I just told you guys last episode, if you watched the last episode, I've been starting all the projects and finishing nothing. It's my mojo, y'all. It's gone. It's gone. It's like, I want to make the things, but once I start making them, I don't want to make them anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> taking a break, taking a break. I was already taking a dyeing break. Now I'm taking a knitting break. What is going on with me, you guys? I don't know. I don't know. I even have the fiber festival that I've been like looking forward to that I put off because of the health stuff. And now I'm like, okay, I can go now. And I'm kind of like, do I really need to go? Like, <laughs> I want to go, but I more so want to go because it's in Seattle and I've never been there. I don't really care about the fiber festival part. Like it, it'd be cool to acquire some more stuff because I like stuff, but I don't need it, you know? Are you comfy now? Can... Hi. <laughs> anyway, sorry, uh, <laughs> distractions. Um, but yeah, like my brain's in a weird place right now. I don't want to do anything. So <laughs> doesn't mean I haven't been buying stuff though. And I told you guys I was gonna try really hard not to, but you know, when I'm feeling down, it's a nice pick me up and I know it'll get used eventually um, or given away to people that will use it. So it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Most of the stuff I had ordered, well, except for these bags here, um, in there <laughs> okay except for the yarn except for the yarn i had already ordered this stuff and was just waiting for it to arrive um well mostly except for the yarn there is all right <laughs> there is something i ordered randomly the other night um because once i fixate on something i can't let it go and i went ahead and ordered this thing but i will use it i know i will use it so it's fine um <laughs> anyway so this episode is just going to be me showing you guys some stuff I acquired. So this is the enabling episode because I'm apparently good at doing that. Um, which again, I'm still trying to stop doing. I really am. Um, and like today I'm trying to put things away. So it made sense to go ahead and film an episode to show you guys this stuff so I can put it away because some of it I'm going to have to try to squeeze in. Yeah. <laughs> too much crap um anyway I have all the things to show you guys it's mostly I was gonna say it's mostly fiber but it's kind of a half and half so not too bad I did go to my spinning class I... do you guys remember I said that I wasn't sure if I should have taken the spinning class because I had already figured out my wheel I don't think I should have taken the class. I mean, not that I regret taking it because I mean, it got me out of the house. I did learn a couple of things, but I didn't need it. I don't think like the first class I learned more treadling, 
better because I, like, I'm still working on my treadling and maintaining speeds. I've also learned that when I listen to certain music, kind of like when I drive, if I listen to like, if I listen to industrial music when I drive, I kind of drive like an asshole. <laughs> so um, yeah, I try not to listen to that so much when I'm driving, which sucks because that's usually when I want to listen to it. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I don't listen to industrial music when I'm driving or I try not to because I've, I've learned that I'm a jerk when I listen to industrial and drive. And I've also learned that when I'm spinning, I can't listen to industrial <laughs> or metal or just certain music I can't listen to because I tend to move my feet like you know, like if like if this is your thing, if you're like really into something or if you like start headbanging or like rocking out or not really headbanging, but I mean if you start rocking out to a song or like even all right, even if you're listening to jazz, you start like tapping your fingers along, you know what I mean, like nodding your head with something good. Well, when you're treadling, when you're trying to spin, you tend to pick up the rhythm of what you're listening to. And um, yeah, a mess, y'all, a mess. Anyway, but I did do my spinning homework while listening to music, so the bobbins are a mess. Um, and that's part of the reason why I feel like I shouldn't have taken the class because like the first class was learning your wheel, like all the parts and the whatnots and learning to treadle. The second part of the class was focused on getting fiber on the wheel, which I thought was our homework. Like, here's my understanding. Like, <laughs> leaving the class last Saturday, I thought it was, okay, you figured this part out. We've got you, like, working on getting take up on the wheel. And your homework was to bring in a couple of bobbins of what you spun. And I thought the second class was going to be plying because my understanding was of the homework was three bobbins of however much you can get on them. Just bring three. And I did. And we didn't freaking touch them because every, and this is nothing against anybody in the class. I mean, it's a beginner spinning wheel class. I get it. But as the only person that had the homework. <laughs> so our second class was more focused on drafting and getting fiber on the wheel, which I have already figured out how to do. I mean, I'd already, pre-class, I'd already made my own yarn. So I didn't need the class, I don't think. I think it would have been like an intermediate class or something, or like the instructor, Mel, mentioned that she was probably gonna do like a, like a drafting specialty class at some point, like, you know, worsted spinning versus woolen spinning. And I would totally sign up for those classes because with my wrist thing and whatnot, don't yell at me, you guys. My uh, wrist brace is wet, so it is drying right now. And I'm not gonna pick up anything heavy, so it's okay. Um, <laughs> but anyway, like uh, with my wrist thing, one of the things that might help with it, Mel was saying was if I started doing long draw, cause then I'm not so, like here, I'm like, you know, or like alternating hands. So I would be more into that class. That's the class I probably should have taken. Uh, I don't know when she's gonna offer that. It, it's like maybe at some point. Um, but yeah, I didn't need the beginner spinning wheel class. But hey, it got me out of the house. I met some new people. It's fine. Anyway, I made some yarn, you guys. Um, I think I showed you guys I made Rolex on the the blending board I made myself that I still need to redo. I spun them, I finished them. This is what my Rolex turned into. I don't really like it, it's fine. It was just practice for me on learning how to spin off of a Rolex. And there's a fly in here. Did I leave the back door open? Arr. It's my Rolex. So right, so right, it's okay. And then I spun that fiber I got in my Paradise Fibers bag, and I have a new one to open. And I admit, I fully admit, 
I didn't take my time with this. I wasn't trying to be consistent with this. I was just trying to spin off of a braid because I'd never spun off of a braid before. Um, and it's a freaking mess and very uneven and thick and thin. And there's parts where the curly cue wasn't completely, can I fix that? <laughs> no, I've already finished this, haven't I? Oh, dang. Let me see if I can stretch it out and kind of Nope. Okay, anyway, this is a mess. I fully admit that this is a mess. But to be honest, there was a lot of yellow. <laughs> there was a lot of yellow in the fiber and I knew it wasn't something I was gonna use and I just really wanted the practice spinning off of a fiber braid. So this isn't the best, but I did it. So right, I'm never gonna use this for anything. So you know how they tell you to keep your first gain? I didn't do that because I showed you guys the rainbow one that I did like the first time I ever spun anything that was basically rope and I made it into a, a scarf thing. I'll keep this as my first spun <laughs> skein that I never do anything with because it's messy and I don't really see myself using it for anything. So yeah, meh. But this skein, I'm super proud of it. It's the most consistent thing I've spun so far. It doesn't have a ton of thick and thin spots. There are no little cute little coily pigtails in it. I'm very proud of it. It's my first fractal spin and it's super bright and I have no idea what I would use it for. I think I would have to pair it with black because I pair everything with black. Cause it's so freaking bright. This is, I showed you guys this fiber, but I spun it. It's a fractal and I did it and I'm proud of my, there's two flies. God dang it. I need to buy a new screen for the back door. Anyway, check it out, check it out. Look how bright it is, it's so bright, it's so bright. But this should work like Primrose Homestead or Spin Cycle because it's it's fractal and it's a gradient. So one skein was just a giant rainbow gradient, or one skein, one bobbin was just a giant rainbow gradient and the other one I broke up into four pieces. So it should work up like a Spin Cycle Primrose type yarn. I'm so proud of it, but it is so freaking bright and so not my vibe. I mean, it was pretty. I wouldn't have bought it if I didn't like it, but liking how color looks and actually using it, this is so freaking bright, y'all. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but it's pretty and I'm proud of it. <laughs> I'm doing another fractal spin with rainbow. Um, also from the same, I should tell you who dyed things. Um, this one was, actually I told you guys already, this was from Paradise Fibers. I can't remember the name of the dyer right off the top of my head, but it was the Paradise Fibers fiber braid um, from somebody. <laughs> it was from the butterfly box. Anyway, okay, so that was from Paradise Fibers. This was from the, the Ginkgo Leaf on Etsy. And this is called Pink Rainbow. I bought rainbow yarn from the same place. Also the Ginkgo Leaf. I think I have her card in here. I do. The Ginkgo Leaf. Okay. And I got rainbows. So I'm doing another fractal spin of rainbows. So this is what I'm spinning on my e-spinner right now. So all of these have been on the e-spinner. And then on the wheel, all I have, all I've spun on the wheel are the bobbins for my class that we didn't use. So I'm just gonna have to apply them on my own and it's fine since there's three and I kind of did decent sized bobbins. I'm going to go ahead and do a three ply with these. I know I'm going to have more on this one because this was part of a braid and part of what I had left over from my drop spindle class. 
but I'm gonna apply these three together once I figure out. I have a, what's it called? A Lazy Kate from the same place that makes my e-spinner. Dreaming Robots, so it's plastic. It falls over a lot. So <laughs> I know they're designing a new one that's weighted so it doesn't fall over so much. That said, um, if you have any Lazy Kate recommendations, spinners, um, Lazy Kate recommendations are welcome. I'm thinking I want a vertical one and not the arched one because I feel like the arched one, like when you're pulling the fiber off, I feel like it's gonna rub on the arches, does it not? I think a vertical one would be nice and collapsible and easier to put away. I think I want a vertical one, but I think I definitely want one that's tensioned. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna spin these together. And this is the Malabrigo Aguas braids. I had two, so this is like a braid and a half of that. And since I did my homework <laughs> and I have three bobbins, I'm gonna apply them together. And I'm all out of Aguas, I think. Yeah, that was the last of my Aguas for Malabrigo. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply them together. But my thing is, since I know that this one has more on it, how do I do a three ply with this one? Or maybe I should make a two ply and then when I run out, I can put, I can put this one on the yarn ball thing on the winder and make cake of it and then I can spin off of the cake and join it to these two and then I could just do a giant two ply. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I kind I really wanted to do a three ply. Um I'm just gonna do it and go for it. And then if I have a bunch left over, maybe I'll just do a two ply, like a little mini and two ply with it. I don't know. Anyway, I need to spin this. Oh I need to ply this. So that's my next goal um spinning wise. Also, when I, if you follow me on Instagram, when I plied this one, I totally filled up my bobbin. So I got into my head that I needed a chunkier bobbin, uh, which means I need a bigger flyer. So after some polls and reading a bunch of reviews, I ordered, a new flyer. This is the bulky flyer from Schacht. I thought about getting the Ashford Joy bulky flyer. I think it's called the Freedom Flyer, the one that goes on the Joy. But here's why I decided not to go with that one. Because it was like a third of the price. Um, <laughs> it only fits the Joy. And as I've mentioned multiple times, I don't know if I'm going to keep the Joy. And with this one, it fits all shacked wheels, all the current wheels. So if I decide to get like a wheel that doesn't fold up, um, although I'm probably just gonna, me and Cersei are friends. Me and Cersei are good friends. Although I kind of was looking at the matchless, it's really expensive. But if I was ever to get another shacked wheel, I could use this on it. And I think that's worth it. Um, that's worth it to me. Um, granted, I had no problems with the joy during my class. Go figure. Um, so <laughs> it works and I might go ahead and keep it now because I, I can use it. So I could have gone ahead and gotten the other one, but I went ahead with this one instead. And I ordered it from a shop I went to uh, for Brian Beck. It was a uh, fabulous yarn. And it ended up being was it $150 cheaper <laughs> than it was on all the other websites that I looked at because I bought it from Fabulous Yarns. So worth it in my opinion. So it ended up being not that much more expensive than if I bought the Ashford one. So it worked out because literally 150 bucks cheaper, you guys. Um, so it made sense. <laughs> yeah, so I had the jumbo and to compare, Come here, Cersei. Oh, hang on. Oh. Let's take you off. This is the regular flyer. This is the jumbo. 
They don't look that different, but if you look at the bobbin size, yeah, yeah, plying. So yeah, I'm gonna use this for my plying purposes. Did I put that on back? I put it on the wrong one. <laughs> Okay, so about that. And when you buy the the flyer, it comes with a bigger maiden <laughs> learning. So yeah, there you go. And to compare the bulky maiden to the regular one, since we're doing the compares and whatnots. Oof. That's the regular one. This is the bulky one. So it's not that much bigger, but you know, as you can see, like, it's a little chunkier. So yeah, that'll be fun. I haven't plied on the, on the big wheels yet. I've only done like regular bobbins. I haven't done any plying. Uh, singles, that's what they're called, uh, words. All right, so that's that. So I bought that. And, oops, knocking the water over. All right. All right. Should I continue with fiber and then do the yarn last? Yes. That's what we're gonna do. During my spinning class, I needed some more fiber, so I bought this. This is Ashford Merino Sliver in the Sorbet colorway. I like it except for the yellow but I feel like the yellow will blend in okay and it won't bother me so much. I mean, it's already blending in. Spins up like that. Which isn't so bad, right? Right, right? All right. Kind of lavender-y and gossamer looking. I like it. It's fine. I'll use it for something. Um, yes. And then, when I came home from my spinning class, I had pre-ordered this from the uh, place that does the spinning box, this Kamash Fiber Arts. <laughs> I'm trying to decide now if I want to blend it with more black. I kind of, I think what I'm going to, all right, here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to spin some of it as is, and then some of it I'm going to spin, I'm going to, Put it on the blending board with more black and like navy so it's like a red like a crow feather funny thing it's called fancy crow i've also seen it sold elsewhere um also with the crow moniker to it so i don't whatever it's fine it's so shiny y'all but i bought it because they said black is black merino with uh, rainbow sparklies in it. And I was like, rainbow sparklies? Yes, please. Every time you move, you move the camera. Every time. Stay over here. Don't touch the camera anymore. Anyway. <laughs> it's so sparkly. It's so sparkly, it looks green. Uh, but it's rainbow, I think it's Firestar but it's rainbow, it's glitterific, y'all. It's glitterific, but it's still soft. It doesn't feel like plastic, which I think is awesome. Uh, look at that, look at it. Look at, look at all the sparklies. Look at the sparklies. Look at the sparklies. Oh my God, I love it. I love it so much. And, and um, um, I got a pound of it. <laughs> Don't judge me, it's gorgeous. Are you moving? Are you leaving? What are you doing? Can I move the camera? Slide. Oh. Okay. Sorry, Theo was napping and yeah. But look at all of it, look at Sparkles, sparkles, sparkles. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so. <laughs> like I said, I think I'm gonna blend it with some blue and a little bit more black. But I think some of it has to be spun as is. I think I have to do it, I have to do it. 
And if you've been here for a bit, you know damn well <laughs> that I already have black sparkly rainbow yarn. It's, a, it's fine. I didn't spin that one. This one will be spun by me. But yeah, I have black, I think I have five skeins of DK black sparkly rainbow yarn from Feederbrook Fibers. And they probably use something similar to this. It's fine. I'm, it's fine. This one's gonna be mine though. Let's look at the sparkles. taking everything in me not to take everything off the bobbins that I have right now and start working with this because I want to play with it so bad. But I either need to dye some blue or buy some navy to blend with it. Because um, the blue that I have in my fiber stash already has glitter in it and this definitely does not need any more glitter. Um, but stoked. Love it. Kind of wish I bought two pounds of it. It's fine. It's fine. A pound is what? That's four skeins of yarn. That's not bad. That's not bad. I can't see myself wearing a black sparkly sweater, but I can see myself wearing a black sweater with striped sparkly bits. Or like some impromptu, like if I was going to do my copperhead tee, I could do it in black and then do the snakes in the black sparkly bits. So it wouldn't be as defined, but it would look more like scales. I don't know. Anyway, this fly is making me crazy. Um, and they sent a sample of Outdoorsy. I haven't looked at yet. I don't like it. <laughs> Yellow. Oh, um, no. I mean, I'll use it for pride. Oh, I can put it, I can blend it. I can blend it. Well, actually, you know, I don't mind it so much. It's just too much. All right, so that's too much yellow. That looks okay. So I think maybe I'll just blend this with some brown because I do have some brown fiber. So I'll just blend this in with it and maybe some more green and that'll tone down that yellow in there. I don't know, whatever. Free fiber, it's fine. It's a sample. All right, so there's that. Is there anything else? No. All right, and I think my spinning box, my next spinning box should be here soon. Um, got more fiber. Then I had pre-ordered this because uh, it was dyed to order. This is from Cashmere and Coconuts, also on Etsy. And this is, is it Autumn Rainbow? I can't remember, hang on. This is BFL and Silk, four ounces. I thought it was Autumn Rainbow. It's not written on here though. Anyway, I think it was Autumn Rainbow. <laughs> Just gonna keep repeating myself and make it right. Um, isn't that pretty? Isn't that gorgeous? I got two of them, so yeah. I'm thinking this might have to be another I should leave it as is. Should I spin it as is or do like a gradient with it? I don't know. I think maybe I'll spin it as is. Oh, it's pretty. Cause so I was thinking I could also do a gradient with this one, but I kind of like it the way it is. I don't know. I just thought it was really pretty and dark. And we know I like dark colors. Dual tones forever and ever and ever. I mean, it's got a little bit of yellow in it, but it's more of a gold. So I don't mind it so much. Focus, there we go. It's not too bad. I got two of these. Cause again, I wasn't sure how much fiber makes a skein of yarn, but apparently the answer to that is four ounces. So I really only needed one. But this way I'll have two semi-matching skeins of yarn. It's got two of those. I placed another fossil fibers order because I apparently like fossil fibers. 
And I got Arizona Cacti. Benny found that bone. This looks like that. I thought it was really pretty with that deep purple in it. And that one is, I think it's a silk. Yes, BFL silk. And then this one, <laughs> this is Polwarth and silk. This is Bryce Canyon. Desert beachy vibes. Isn't that pretty? Oh, it's so pretty. Fossil Fibers has excellent color sense. Just excellent, just gorgeous. I need to pay better attention to the time though because there are some colorways that they've dyed that I really wanted and I just, I missed it. I was like 20 minutes late. It's fine. I don't have any room for this fiber, <laughs> which is why I'm like, I need to spend more so I can make space. <laughs> and this one is Corydale. This is Evening Spire. More desert beachy vibes with deep purple. I might actually blend this. I think I showed you guys. I have some Corydale that I bought at Fancy Fibers. I wanna say it was for one of the national parks, but it's got like, you know, earthy, earthy tones, like deep orangey, umber, brown color in it. And I think it would look really good with this. Even though it's got yellow in it, I like it. But yeah, I think this, cause that's also Corydale, I think they would look really good together. So I might, I might spin them together. We'll see. I have to look at them next to each other. Um, but yeah, so that was my fossil fiber order. Okay, put that in there. Is that all my fiber? No. Okay. And then I got my Paradise Fibers bag for June. And June's almost over. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody's gotten their bags by now. Um, Cause this has been sitting in my hallway for a little bit. Yeah, this was shipped on the 7th. So it's been sitting in my hallway. Let's open it. Everything? Okay. See what this says. Is dumpster fire the theme? Because <laughs> that's kind of awesome. <laughs> Is dumpster fire the theme? Please be the theme. Okay, so in your bag, you have one ounce of degummed mulberry silk cocoons. Hey, more silk cocoons. I still don't know what to do with the other ones. Two ounces of staycation, an undyed blend consisting of 60% Polwarth, 20% Mulberry Silk, and 20% Yak. That sounds soft. And I can dye it. Fun. Okay. And then two ounces of depigmented Yak fiber. How do you depigment? How do you take the melanin out of something? It is melanin. It, all right. So I know melanin gives my skin its color. Is that how animals work? Believe it or not, I was a biology major. I just, <laughs> anyway. One ticket to paradise pin, one wave stitch marker, one sweet honeydew green tea. Ooh, yes, please. Um, did you know, if you like the matcha green tea uh, from Starbucks, it's got honeydew in it, the concentrate. One vacation Eunice vinyl glitter sheep sticker. Okay. And the nice scarf. Nice like the rock. I mean, if you didn't take geology class, you wouldn't know what I'm talking about. Nice. G-N-E-I-S-S. -S. Nice. Okay, let's, let's, let's look at the things. They're not labeled. <laughs> God, I hate that. Okay. These must be the silk cocoons. These don't look like the other silk cocoons I have. The other silk cocoons. Oh, because they've been degummed. 
that's the thing I was talking about. Okay, so when I got the silk cocoons in my spinning box, they were like whole and solid. And I was talking about there's a process like you wash them to get the sticky bits out. These have been washed, degummed. Okay, these have been washed to get all the sticky bits out. So that's what they look like after they've been washed. Interesting. I wonder if I can like comb these and I mean, I'm sure I could make yarn out of them. All right, anyway, silk cocoons without the sticky bits. So that's what it would look like if I did that. Okay. <coughs> and then I'm guessing, I'm gonna assume that this one is the yak. Depigmented yak. Because even though it's depigmented, it's got this kind of taupey look. Oh my God, this is gorgeous. You guys are so soft. Oh, oh, that's nice. It's got a really taupey. Oh, it's such a pretty color. Look at that color. Told you guys I was obsessed with neutrals. This is like a perfect grayish taupey. Oh my God, it's soft. It's nice. I'm probably not even gonna dye that. I'm gonna leave that natural and spin it. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Ooh, give me something to practice, spin a little bit, see if I like it, order some more. Okay. And then this is the other one. <laughs> Polar silk yak. Oh my god. Ooh. It's so soft. It's so soft. Look at that halo. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, that's that's delightful. Oh. I'm kind of curious, like, all right, what's the is it autism? I don't remember. Some movie I was watching, but it, it like the texture I don't remember what it's called but when you have a thing about like textures this would be so fun to like one of those classes they do for kids so they can like play with different textures and see how things feel no it was for blind people it was for um the mask it was all right <laughs> sorry not the mask but mask all right so the mask is a Jim Carrey movie it's I hate it um even though I like Jim Carrey there's a movie called mask with Cher and Sam Elliott and Eric Stoltz. If you've ever seen it, tears. Um, and also probably I wanted to date bikers when I was a kid. <laughs> anyway, so at, at a point in the movie, Eric Stoltz goes to a school for the blind and they, they're at a table and they're feeling different things. Am I remembering this right? Or am I remembering a class that I took? Anyway, it's like they were feeling like they wanted to know like what cotton felt like and he gave her like like what clouds were like so he gave her like cotton balls to touch and that's like what clouds were like and then i think there were prickly the little prickly things do you remember the pricklies i don't know what kind of tree they come off of but the prickly things am i remember am i combining memories <laughs> Because I remember in class, we used to put googly eyes on cotton balls. And then if you were bad in class, you got one of the prickly things with, with googly eyes on them. Am I mixing that up with a movie? I don't know. Anyway, my point is texture, like playing with textures. Fiber would be so fun to take to like a class for like people, like like school for the blind so they can like feel the different textures of the things. Do they still do stuff? I don't know rambling I'm sorry <laughs> okay and then let's see let's see what the pen looks like it looks like a movie ticket when? I'll keep that I'll keep that yes that's so me and I'm totally gonna drink this tea because it'll be really good with some honey and then this is the sheet I know a lot of people think these sheep stickers are cute 
All right, that's the sheep sticker. Eh, meh. There was one I think they did for the Northern Lights. That sticker was cool. Okay, so that's that. Done, Paradise Fibers. I'm happy with this. I guess I'm glad I didn't cancel it, but I don't know where to put all this stuff, but it's fine. Okay, that's it for fiber. Let's look at yarn. So <laughs> when I went to a spinning class, I saw this on the West 7th wool wall and I was like, ooh, Halloween yarn. They've got that out already. Uh, this is a one of a kind Halloween colorway from West 7th wool. This is on the Hunter Sock base, which is 7030. Give me Halloween vibes. Halloween socks. Okay, so that. And then, <laughs> so much stuff. <laughs> okay, so I have so much yarn. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I ordered, all right, so mustache yarns, which is the self striping yarn I have the most of has a summer concert series and she has a bunch of pink floyd yarn as you guys know like the dark side epv i love it um i have like three skeins of it um but yeah pink floyd yarn she's one called the wall and then there was this one and then i have to admit i am a little bit disappointed because on the website if you all right so all right on the website it looks like goldfish orange this is like pastel orange so it's gonna be a giveaway because i'm not feeling it because it's very yellow it's very yellow and the lighter shade of orange in it leans very yellow so it's not my thing which sucks because wish you were here is one of my favorite pink Floyd songs and this colorway is like you know the whole just two lost souls swimming in a fishbowl year after year. That's what this is dyed for. And it's very yellow. <laughs> Cause if you look at it on the website, it's like orange, yellow, orange, yellow, like goldfish orange and a little bit of yellow. This is yellow, yellow. Um, so yellow. Look at all that yellow y'all. Look at all that yellow. Look, look at all that yellow. And like, <sighs> That's the orange. It's so yellow. It's not orange enough. It's not orange enough. It's not goldfish orange. Um, so I'm not feeling this, um, which I'm very sad about because I love this song. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be a giveaway. I don't know. Giveaway, you guys. For you guys this time. Not for Instagram, for you guys. This is for you guys. Um, Let me let that rotate in my head for a little bit and I'll let you guys know how to enter the giveaway for the, the yarn. Um, <laughs> let me percolate a little bit. And then I got, <clears throat> Beachy Breeze Fibers was having a trunk show at On The Lamb Yarn Shop. So I swung by to say hello and uh, pick up some things that I didn't need. <laughs> and she had socks, um, Sock samples there. I really should do samples when I sell my yarn, but I don't, well, I'm gonna eventually repeat colorways. So maybe I'll do sock samples for colorways that I repeat. But anyway, she had a sock sample of this one and I really liked it, so I bought it. Um, and this is on the Yak Base. Yeah, this is 65% Merino, 15% Yak, 20% Silk. This is Cosmic Cliffs. And this is her Lagoon fingering base. Focus, there we go. Mars vibes. I I just really liked the socks that were there. So I, I bought this because I wanted to make socks. And then <laughs> glitter. Um, <laughs> this is deep space on the quartz fingering, which is 75% merino, 20% nylon, 5% gold stellina. Um, I kind of kicked myself a little bit for buying this because I have this base and I could have dyed it myself, but I'm supporting another dyer. It's fine. This is just a really pretty maybe on a gold glitter base. 
Um, and then because I dye mostly black and gray, like that's the dye I use the most, I could have dyed this too. Um, this is 75.25. <laughs> this is black hole on the boardwalk sock base. And it's like a I want to say this is tornado. It's like tornado gray. Well, that's the dye name. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's what they used, but you know, this reminds me of the tornado gray um, at a deep depth of shade. But anyway, it's a really dark, dark, dark gray. It's not black. It's gray um, with a hint of blue to it, which is why I think it's like tornado gray. But anyway, <laughs> and then she had this uh, sock sample of this one. And I meant to buy the non-glitter base and I bought the glitter one. Dang it. And I literally just realized that. That's okay. This is also the crystal fingering base. This is Milky Way. It's fine. I don't mind it. This is the, this is the base I don't carry anymore. So this was my silver screen base. And I've switched, um, cause the silver screen, my original silver screen base, which is this one, only had 5% uh, silver Stellina in it. And the one I use now has 10%. Um, but I liked the socks that she did for her sample. So I bought this yarn. Focus. Move my tattoo. There it goes. It's cute. It's fine. Socks. <laughs> so I got that. And then on one of my random, I need to buy something right now at night things that I do. Um, <laughs> Did I buy this at night or did I buy this while I was bored at work? I don't remember. Anyway, I bought some more watercolor sock cones. Because <laughs> I decided I needed the full collection to put on my bookshelf for display purposes. Not to knit with, for display purposes. Who am I? Anyway. I got the cones of the colors I didn't already have because I already have two, three. Do I have two or three? I don't remember. I now have all the colors. It's fine. <laughs> I will eventually make socks out of all of these cones. They're not just for display purposes, but for some reason in my head, I wanted to put them on my bookcase until I feel like knitting with them, but I will eventually want socks. I'm thinking what I'm going to do. Actually, now that I really think about it, I think I might send all of these to Aquila to have cranked. I think I might send all of these to it because they're already on cones. Um, yeah. Then I don't have to knit them and then I have perfect socks. I wonder if I can get her to do like regular socks and shorties since I don't like long socks. <coughs> Ew. Or I could have her do like a 50 gram pair of socks for me and then she could keep the other half. I don't know. I might send these to Aquila to get cranked. Um, I still have Andy the Mitress had cranked, um, some of my yarn and I haven't used it yet because I've never actually used cranked like a tube, a sock tube. I've never done anything with that. Um, so maybe I should mess with that first. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I got those from on the lamb. And then when I did my giveaway for my Instagram prize, I uh, went to McKinney Knittery and the reason that I had them meet me there in my defense was because I had shown you guys some yarn that I was in love with. And I said that I don't think I bought enough and I needed to go back and get one more skein of each color. That's what I went in there for. That's what I went in there for. So you guys have seen these already. I just went back for an extra skein. So these. This is that wool folk afar yarn that I was like, oh my God, it's so soft. I can't believe this is just Merino. I just went back to get a second skein. So got them. <laughs> so mm. And I have an idea of what I'm going to use them for. I found a shawl that's like a scarf. Well, it's a scarf, but
but it's big enough to be, I don't know. It's a big scarf, but it's done in triangles and then you like invert them. So it's like rectangular, but it's a gradient, like a triangle gradients in each rectangle. And I think that's what I'm gonna do with it. I don't know. It's hard to describe without seeing anyway. <laughs> so I think that's what I'm gonna use those for. I think, cause I think that's a DK pattern and those are supposedly worsted, but because of how drapey this yarn is, I feel like it's more of a DK. Oh, it doesn't say. Anyway, whatever. I got plans. And then <laughs> what happened was McKinney Knittery started carrying Plucky a while back. And every time I go in there, I look at this gray yarn and I'm like, every time I've looked at it, I'm like, I don't need it. I can dye gray myself. I have so much gray dye because I tend to every, almost every single colorway I dye has either gray or black in it because that's me. Um, but <laughs> every time I go in there, I walk by this yarn and I was finally like, you know what? I'm just going to buy it. So I got a sweater quantity. <laughs> of gray yarn not like I don't have a sweater quantity of gray yarn from Yarnaceous that I need to make a sweater out of it's just gray it's just gray but it's like a tonal gray I, anyway it's just I could have dyed this myself I could have dyed it myself <sighs> this is Lux Merino Worsted which is 100% ultra fine merino non superwash oh that's expensive and, and it's called Wonderlust. Who's got Wonderlust all the time? So that's water quantity. And then I got an extra skein just in case. <sighs> anyway, this, my friends, is going to be a Glen Barrow sweater. Because I've told you guys a couple times that I want to make another Glen Barrow sweater. And yes, I know the one that I have is gray too. It's fine. Um, this will be in a bigger size. And but like, even though it's got a little bit of shaping to it that Glen Barrow does, I want to make it a little bit baggier and just, it's going to be like my go-to comfy sweater. And I feel like... This is gonna be the warm, cozy one because the other one I made is, is it cotton acrylic or cotton and wool? It's Cascade Cantata, whatever Cascade Cantata is. I wanna say it's cotton and acrylic and wool. That's cotton acrylic wool blend, I think maybe. Anyway, this is 100% merino. So they'll be on different bases. <laughs> I don't, I, I really want to make another Glen Barrow sweater. And I know originally I was like, I wanted it to be green. But I would wear the crap out of a gray. I mean, I like gray. It's one of my favorite colors. So, and yes, gray is a color. Black is a color. Black is all the colors. I know, like, I want to say it was either art and science. They're backwards. I think one of them says that black is absence of all color and one of them says black is all colors. Whichever one says black is all colors, that's that that's the one I'm in. That that's the field I'm in. A field of belief. <laughs> but yeah, black is all the colors. Um so my favorite color is black and gray and blue. Um so yeah, we're gonna that's gonna be a Glen Barrow sweater. And I almost wanted to cast that on immediately because I love the Glen Barrow sweater. So maybe that will get my knitting mojo back because I really like that sweater and I already know in my head how it's going to turn out, how it's going to fit. But should I start another sweater when I have two that I have barely touched? Worsted sweater would go really fast though. I don't know. Anyway. And then... There is this color. <laughs> Some stuff I buy because of the name. This is called Rust in Peace. If you knew me back in the day, you know I really like Megadeth. 
So I had a big thing for Dave Mustaine, which is weird because he's got weird hair, but it's fine. Dave Mustaine was hot back in the day. Um, this is Rust in Peace. <laughs> Don't judge me. And I, I just wanted it. I think this will be really pretty. Do I want to make socks with it or do I want to make something nice? I mean, not that socks aren't nice, but I mean, do I want to make something, you know? I don't know. I just wanted it. Cause it's called Rest in Peace. I had to. So about that. And then when I went to On The Lamb Yarn Shop, they had a Malabrigo sample there um, for that Dos Tierras yarn, which is the alpaca merino one. But I really like this sample and I can't, I think it's called Barn Stable. If I can remember, I'll pop a picture in, but it's the Barn Stable shawl and I really want to make it. Am I ever going to wear it? I don't know. I just want to make it and I got this to make it. This is because I didn't have these colors in my stash. This is Piedras. Yeah, I know it's got a little bit of yellow in it, but it's, I think it's okay because it's a little toned down with the deserty rose colors. Um, and then I got Sandbank for the contrast color. I think it'll be really pretty. So I got that to make the barn stable shawl. And then I saw this I want to say it's Crazy Sock Lady uh, a couple episodes back and I pre-ordered it. This is from Three by the Sea and this is Fireside, Fireside Sock Set. I just thought it was really pretty. And again, I'm really into earthy, like neutral tones right now and it's perfect for that. Um, Probably just gonna make some vanilla socks with it. Focus, dang it. Focus. There we go. That sounds really pretty. So, yeah. And this one came with peach lemonade acai tea. Cold water tea. Okay, cool. And again, that's three by the sea. I think I have some stitch markers from Three by the Sea, if I remember right. Yeah, I have rainbow, like a rainbow stitch marker from them. Anyway, I just thought this sock set was super pretty and earthy and lovely and yeah. Probably should have cast that on instead of the socks I'm working on. I did cast on some socks. It's my only knitting progress. That's these. And this is what happens when you dye a, a yarn skein half and half. It's stripes, but teeny, teeny, tiny stripes. Um, and I did a honeycomb heel because it looked cool with the stripes. I was trying to do a short row heel, but I failed miserably the first time I did it, so I started over. And I bought... I know I'm skipping around. It's okay. It's fine. I ordered these little progress stitch markers because they come with both connections from um, Twill and Print. They're veggies. There was a set. Um, you see, one's a carrot. See, one's a carrot. Focus. See it? All right. One's a carrot. One's a radish. Um, there are three of these. Uh, Cause there was a set, it was like a green leaf pin and then you get a carrot, a radish and a flower if I remember right. And I just wanted the carrot and the radish. Um, oh, and this yarn is Biscoat Sweet Dreams, which I ordered forever ago. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> Told y'all I had a lot of acquisitions. Um, I have another acquisition over there, but I'm not going to show you guys that one because I think I'm going to give it away at some point as a prize. Maybe. I think about it. 
because when I ordered it, I didn't realize the yarn, it's like a bag and a, and a skein of yarn. I didn't realize that the yarn was single ply, not my vibe. Um, I mean, I could keep the bag and just give away the yarn. I don't know, I haven't decided yet, so I'm not gonna show that. And then I got my Bewitched Pigments box for, let's see, what's the next holiday? I always forget the summer holidays. Something with an L, I think. Litha, Litha. I always forget the summer ones. Anyway, I'm not gonna read the thing. Let's see. Oregon Tea Traders Butterfly Pea Flower. Oh, there's no tea, it's just flowers. Well, I mean, you make the flower out of tea, kind of like chamomile's flowers. I've never had butterfly pea flowers. This will be fun to try. Nice floral tea, good for the summer. I'm not reading it, well, I guess I should read the thing. I read all the other ones. Season color is called Dandelion Wishes. The fiber goodies. Needle threader shaped like hummingbirds. I've seen those before. Altar goodies is quartz. The tea is butterfly pea flowers that are made up to Thailand. This flower has a slightly sweet floral flavor. Add a squeeze of lemon juice. No. Oh, okay. So, all right. So there's certain teas when you add uh, citric acid, like lemon juice, to it, it changes the color. I think it turns it blue or something, or pink. I can't remember. I've seen that happen before. I've seen this before. Um, I don't like lemon in tea. Tea should be left perfectly alone. Only thing you should ever add to tea, in my humble opinion, is honey. And I only add honey to certain types of tea, like floral teas. <laughs> Or, you know, yeah, like, you know, ras raspberry and things like that, like fruit teas. I might add a touch of honey, but for me, I mostly drink my tea unsweet unless it's cold tea. And then it's like all the sugar you can put in it because I'm from the South and that's what we do. Um, but hot tea, do not ever, 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 if you're with me, put lemon in my tea unless I'm sick. It's the only time I'll put lemon in my tea because my mom made this concoction that was like... Like, it's called Russian tea, but it's not like Russian. Um, but it's like tang and lemonade and cloves and some other stuff. It's really good. But I only drink it when I'm sick. <laughs> anyway, tangents. Um, little extra. It's violets. Okay. Oh. Not bad. This is Dandelion Wishes. It's green with little hints of blue. See the blue? Like right there, right there. It's all right, I like it, it's not bad. Violet shortbread recipe. It's probably quite tasty. Violet shortbread. And there should be some quartz. Oh, quartz points. I was expecting quartz, like regular quartz stones, but quartz points. Always lovely. I used to make quartz water back when I was uh, really big into Wicca. It was in one of my recipe, like Wiccan recipe books. It's just, I think it's nine stones of quartz in your water. I can't remember what it does. Is it luck? I don't remember. I used to make quartz water all the time anyway. <laughs> Why am I telling you all that? Um. Wow, I could have cut myself. Anyway, this is a, it's got a blade right there. If, I, if I'm looking at it right, there's a blade right there. Um, it's a little quartz needle threader. Yeah, that's a blade. I almost cut myself on this. Fun. Oh, and it flips. Okay, this flips up. It doesn't look like, oh, cause you push, okay. I don't know how to use this, but it's fine. <laughs> needle threader. I think that's it. Yep, that's it in the box. And again, I said I was gonna finish out the year for this one. I'm just curious what all's in the in the boxes. But um, once I've done a full year of the Bewitch Payments box, I'm gonna nix it and then try something else out. Play with all the subscriptions. 
I might do a fiber subscription next year, I think. I think that's it. I've been talking for an hour, I think. Yes, I've been talking for an hour. I think that's all I've got. And I'm not gonna lie, there's some stuff in the mail. <laughs> uh, what did I order? I got, is it fiber or yarn? What did I order? I ordered something. I don't know, but it's arriving in the mail today. So <laughs> I have more stuff coming. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go. It's just impromptu enabling episode. I hope I didn't ramble, but for so long, I was, you guys were probably really bored, weren't you? I'm sorry. Goldfish. <laughs> Two lost souls swimming in a fish bowl. Goldfish, even though it doesn't look like goldfish because it's the wrong shade of orange goldfish to win this and i will do the drawing on my next episode whenever i film it eh. two weeks i don't know whenever i film the next episode i'll draw to give this away so comment goldfish okay that's it bye <laughs> have a good day